Good morning, good morning, good morning. I pray that all is well this morning. I know it's a rainy day this today, but this is the day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it, in this day. For surely it is a beautiful day. We thank God for this opportunity once again to allow us to, to come together and fellowship uh, one with another, Lord God. So we, we just thank God for that opportunity. We thank him for his, his word. We thank him for his son, Jesus Christ. We thank him for all that he's doing, all that he's going to do, and all the things that he has already done. So we just bless God for this beautiful, beautiful day. It is a beautiful day in the Lord today. And we just thank him for that. We just really give him all the praise, give him all the honor, and give him all the glory. Why? Because he's worthy to be praised at all times. No matter where we may find ourselves at in this life, God is worthy to be praised. So we, we, we never hesitate to give him the praise and give him the honor and give him the glory. Why? He's God. He, he, he's God. He, he, he created the heavens and the earth. And not only that, he sustained everything therein. What, what else? Everything that was ever created was created by God. It belongs to him. So, we, so he deserved the praise. He deserved the honor. He deserved the glory always. No matter what you're going through in your life, he still deserves the praise and the honor. So we just bless God this morning. I thank God for each and every one of you guys this morning for, for chiming in. I thank God for uh, those that are are here with us, uh, which I know the weather has kept a lot of people out this morning and got a lot of people out of town, but that's fine. The gospel message must still go forth. And we thank God for that opportunity. And I just, I bless God for you guys. I bless God for you guys for uh, allowing God to use you guys. And, 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 and not only that, for allowing him to uh, instill in you a heart that is ready to give, a heart that is ready to love, a heart that is ready to share, a heart that is ready to go out to one another as God see fit. So we bless God for this opportunity today to stand before you guys uh, and, and, and preach his glorious gospel. Amen. Uh, we, as we get ready to go into the scripture this morning, uh, allow Holy Spirit to open your eyes to something that is very important as the sons of God, as the children of God. We as the body of Christ need to recognize that what God has done already is done. It is not something that is going to happen. It's not something that we're waiting to happen. But no, God to the believer has allowed us to be children of God and, 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 and sons of God. It was all done through the procedure that God done through his son, Jesus Christ, when he gave his son to die for our sins and to give us life and give it to us everlasting, he gave us an opportunity to come and be sons of God or to be children of God. Amen. We, as, as, as the scripture tells us that everything that God done, it was already preordained. It was already done. It was done before the foundation of the world. Okay, what, what, what you trying to say, Pastor? I'm telling you that right now, that if you have accepted Christ as your Savior, then you are a, a child of God, that you are a son of God. Did it just happen? No, it was already foreordained before the foundation of the world. Amen. As we go into the scriptures today, we will see that the scripture is the true word. And the scripture would tell us and show us the truth of the word. Amen. So I, I, I bless God for you guys this morning. As we go into the scripture this morning, let, let's allow the word of God to speak to our hearts. And, and, and this, this way that we don't have to waver and we don't have to wonder. We don't have to guess. Am I a child of God? Uh, 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 am I a son of God? No, you, you should know that. The word tells us that this is why it's so important that we get into the word of God, that we know what the word says about those that have been born of God. 
Yeah, once you've been born of God, you became a son of God, a daughter of God. You're a child of the Most High God. Somebody ought to say amen. So we, so we bless God for this opportunity this morning. Uh, I want you, if you will, and, and I know you do, have your word with you. Always have your sword, which is your word. And, and we're going to take you to uh, Ephesians. Go to the book of Ephesians. And as we go into the book of Ephesians, we're going to, we want to uh, go into the Word and we want to see what the Spirit is saying to the, to the body of believers today. And I want us to pay close attention. Pay close attention. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I love you guys. I love you guys. I thank God for you guys. I know it's a rainy day out, but I do still understand and know that this is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in this day. This day, today. We're going to rejoice in this day, today. Amen. As children of God, we're going to thank our Father for this day. Thank you, Father, for this day. Amen. I thank him for this day. Let us pray. Father God, we come before you right now with thanksgiving in our hearts. Thanking you, Lord God, for another day. Why, Lord God, to give you praise, give you honor, and give you glory, Lord God. And not only that, Lord God, but, but to reach another lost soul on your behalf, Lord God. And Lord God, for the fatherness of the gospel message, Lord God. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity, Lord God, that you have given us, oh God, to, to come into your presence through the power of the Holy Spirit. So, Lord, we ask right now, Lord God, that if it be one today that is coming in that haven't experienced Accept that you as Savior, Lord God. We ask that their hearts be pricked today, that they will receive you, Lord God, as Savior. Not only that, Lord, we pray for the body of believers that are coming in, that you will give us more understanding through the spirit, man, of what does it mean to truly be a child of God. So, Lord God, we ask that you open our spiritual ears and our spiritual eyes, that we may hear what you are saying to us in this day, right now. Well, Lord, we thank you. We bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. We say amen. Amen. And amen. God bless you guys. I thank God for you and I bless God for you all you guys for laboring in the vineyards with us right here at Born Again. We thank you for, for laboring and, 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 and being patient and being meek and being uh, uh, long suffering. We just thank you guys for uh, allowing God to use you mightily as we go forth to get the gospel message out. And, and all things are for the fatherings of the gospel. Amen. We recognize that as, as children of God that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings. We have been blessed with all things that God has promised us as believers. It's, it's done. It is done. So, so, so oftentimes we'll say, well, I need to be encouraged. Well, you should be encouraged when you know that you're a child of the Most High God. Well, why you say that, Pastor? Well, if you're a child of the Most High God, then if he's your father, then everything that he's promised you, he will give it to you. Well, why you say that? Well, us as parents, when our kids ask us for something, we, we try our best to give it to them. And, and, and not only that, uh, we try our best to be in obedience with the word of God, that we trust him, that he will never leave, nor will he ever forsake us. That's what uh, 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 some of the uh, privileges of being a child of the Most High. He'll never leave you, nor will he ever forsake you. All things work for the good of those who love him. So we, so we, we, we really need to understand that there is, a, 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 there is a responsibility as being a child of God and as privileges of being a child of God. And it is a way that we became sons and children of God. It's all a process, but one thing we know that it was already foreordained before the foundation of the world. God had already set it in place. And as we look at our scripture today, it's going to tell us, as, as the body of believers, it's going to show us. And I want us to really get this. I really want us to get this because it's important to know why. That way the enemy can't sneak in or creep in and tell you something else. This is the reason for the studying to show ourselves approved 
Uh, 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 this is the reason that we go into the word like we do. This is the reason why you see us going into the word and the scripture after scripture, precept after precept. Why? It's because the word is living. And if we allow the word to come into our inner man, it will strengthen us as the body of Christ. Why? To go out and do work that God has called us to do. Amen. So we, so we bless God that, 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 that the word Will, will come alive in us today, that the word will come alive in you and that you will be able to understand that which God has already done. I mean, it's done. It's finished. Amen. So let's, so let's, 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 let's get into the word. Pay attention to Apostle Paul in Ephesians, the book of Ephesians. Pay attention to what he's saying and the wording as he said it, to put us right here today under the same teaching that this epistle was teaching. Paul, the Apostle Paul, writing to the believers in Ephesus. It will put us right here in the same instance as Paul is talking to the church right now today. Amen. Here, here it is. Uh, the epistle to the Ephesians. Or to the church of Ephesus, or the churches in Ephesus. Chapter 1, the very first chapter, in the very first verse, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God. Paul said that he was an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, meaning that it was the will of God that he be an apostle. Okay? And that is one that seen Jesus. That is one that was called of Jesus. That is one that actually the apostles seen him. Amen. They, they, they not only seen him, but they witnessed him and they heard from him and they were set into the work or into the ministry by Jesus Christ of the will of God. Come on, let's go, let's go. Oftentimes, this day and time, a lot of people want to take on the name apostle, but it, it, it means the apostles that they mean to be sent. But these guys here, these apostles, they actually walked with him. They actually seen Jesus. They were actually empowered by the Holy Ghost through to go and preach the gospel message. Amen. Come on, Paul said it like this. He said, to the saints which are at Ephesus. Okay, the saints that which, which, which is at Ephesus. Okay, that's the saints that are at Ephesus. Okay, that's, that's fine. And to the Faithful in Christ Jesus. That can, that puts us right in there. As the body of believers, those that are faithful believers, those that have accepted Christ as their Savior, right now Paul is actually talking to you through the scriptures because he said, to the faithful in Christ Jesus. We have to understand that our walk, that we walk, it is in Christ Jesus. Jesus, I tell you what, I tell you what, I, I, I want to go somewhere right quick. No, I won't. I won't. I won't stay right here right quick. To the favor that are in Christ Jesus. All right. And then he said, grace to you and peace from our God, I mean from our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Pay attention, children of God. Pay attention, sons of God. This is what I want to show us through the power of the Holy Spirit to show us that which God has already laid before the foundation of the world. Come on now, let us go. He said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all, not some. Now, who, who, who is Paul talking to? He said the saints at Ephesus, and then he also said the faithful, come on now, he said the faithful, this today, today, the faithful in Christ Jesus. I'm telling you today, the faithful that are in Christ Jesus, that blessed be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places where? In Christ. In Christ. He had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in Christ. We, we as the body of Christ, 
cannot leave Christ out of the message. We cannot turn this thing around and make it about us. It's got to be Christ in us. It's got to be through Christ. It's got to be of Christ. Come on now. It's got to be in Christ. Why? Because if it's not, then you make the cross of none effect. The way that we became children of God is through Jesus Christ. The way that we're able to be sons of God is through Jesus Christ. If the message don't have Jesus in it, then it's none for it's no good. Come on, we, we need to get there. We need to get there. Here it is, here it is. It said that according as he had chosen us, according as he had chosen us. Well, you mean that you mean I wasn't the one that chose God? No, he chose us. What you mean? What you what you mean he chose us? I, I accepted Christ and I did and I chose him. He chose us. The word just said, according as he had chose us in him. In who? In Christ. He chose us in Christ. Pay attention now. Before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Pump your brakes right there. Stop right there. I want to go somewhere else and hear the same message. Go to Peter. Go to go to uh first Peter. Let's go to first Peter. I want to see, I want to hear, I want to hear the same thing because I want to understand and know why that I'm a child of God. I want to know how I became a child of God. I want to, I want to hear the word that, that what should separate me from the love of God. Or uh, what then, if God be for me, who can be against me? I, I need to understand and know that what it, does it mean to be a son of God? What does it mean to be a child of God? What does it mean to be blessed of God? Oh, hallelujah. We need to understand what does it mean to be in Christ? Hallelujah. The blessing is that we're in Christ. Oh, yeah. It's not the blessing is not in the flesh, man. The blessing is in the spirit, man, because the blessing. Oh, thank you, Lord God. It is in Christ. Greater he that is in me than he that is in the world. Who is in you? The spirit of the Holy Ghost. Where come Christ? Christ the King. Come on now, come on, I, I, we need to understand this. We need to understand it. Let's go to First Peter because Peter just said, he, Paul just said, according as he had chosen us before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Come on, I, I, I heard Peter say something to that effect in First Peter. I heard Peter tell you who he's talking about, who that love is. Who that love is. Come on. We got to always understand and we want to always be able to see Jesus in every word. We want to be able to see Jesus in every message. Why? Because he is the hope of glory. We want to be able to see that which Christ is and he, oh man, he is the hope of glory. So we want to understand this. Come, we want, we, Well, I don't want to be confused and I want to understand who and why. How did, how did, how, how was I uh, already preordained before the foundation of the world? Come on, let me go. Peter said it like this. Come on. I, I'm, I see the gospel in this. I see the gospel in this already. He said, Peter said in first Peter, the very first chapter around about the 18th verse, uh, uh, Peter uh, said it like this, that he, he, he going he gonna to lay it out for us right quick. Peter said it like this for as much as you know, that you were not redeemed. Come on now. You were not redeemed with corruptible things as of silver and gold for from your vain conversation received by the traditions of your father. Come on, show me then, Peter. But with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb, come on, without blemish and without spot who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Paul said, according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. How? In Christ. Peter was talking about the, that, that the blood of Jesus, oh, hallelujah, it 
was not corruptible. It's not corruptible. Paul said, "You, Peter said, you weren't, you weren't, you weren't redeemed with corruptible blood. You weren't redeemed with no bulls blood. You weren't redeemed with no sheep's blood. But you were redeemed with the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world, and that is Jesus Christ. Yeah, the hope of glory. Come on, I, I need us to understand the connection, and I need us to really get." The connection that 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 we can be no longer tossed and uh, to and forth with any kind of way of doctrine that we can stand firmly on that rock, which is Jesus Christ. He is the rock of our salvation. Oh, somebody might as well say amen. We, we need to understand that as children of God, we have the promises of God. And as children of God, we don't have to fear as we don't have no hope. Our hope is in Christ Jesus. Somebody might as well go and say amen. Come on, I, I need to go back. I need to go back. I'm going too fast. I need to slow down. Because I want us to truly, truly recognize uh, the strength and the power of being a child of the Most High God. Amen. I, 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 we underestimate the power of God that when we're so weak and fragile and not knowing that greater He that is in us than He that is in the world. Christ in us, gives us the strength. Guess what? The Bible said that we have already overcome how? Through Christ. Come on, come on, come on. I, I, I need to really, we need to hear this as children of God. It was already foreordained. It's already done. Everything that God has for us is for us. And there's nobody that can take that. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Come on, I, I, I really want to get to where I'm going this morning. I'm, I'm trying to get there. Bear with me. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back to Ephesians. Take your time. Slow down. Take a deep breath. And let's get back to where we was because I really want us to see this. And I'm going to show it to us in a, several different scriptures. But I want us to be able to see this. And I really want us to understand the power and the strength as being a redeemed child of the Most High God, a redeemed child of the Most High God, uh, reconciled back unto him. Come on, let, let us look at this. Let us look at this. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children. Yeah, having, pre I mean, in other words, it was already done. It, it, it was all, it was predestined. I mean, it was already done before the foundation of the world. He told you right before that this was done before the foundation of the world. Peter said that the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. That means God's plan was already done. It was done already. God's plan is perfect. God's plan cannot be uh, uh, altered. God's plan uh, is pure. It's perfect. It's perfection. It means it's done. You don't have to worry about him going back on a contract because he's not a man that he should lie. What God said is, is a, you can, it's stamped. It is, it's sealed. It can't be changed. Come on, here. Having predestinated us, who am I talking about? I'm talking about, I'm talking to the, to the uh, saints at Ephesus, and I'm talking to the faithful that is in Christ right now. The faithful that are in Christ right now. That's who he's talking to. And he said, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Christ Jesus, guess what? To himself. Okay, the adoption, he said, was by Christ Jesus, but guess where it was? To himself. Guess what it was? According to the good will, to, according to the good pleasure of his will. It was according to the good pleasure of God's will that we be adopted children of, through, through the blood of Jesus Christ back unto himself, that's when it said that we have been reconciled, we were redeemed, and we were reconciled back unto God because of the blood that was slain before the foundation of the world, because of the blood that was, was shared before the foundation of the world, the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. This gives us the, uh, 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 what I want to say, that gives us the go ahead. That gives us the 100% the, the guarantee that if I accept Christ as my Savior, 
come before now and recognize that, that the law has shown me how sinful that I am. And when I come before him and recognize that the only way that I can be saved, the only way that I can have life everlasting, the only way that I can be a child of God is I got to accept Christ as my Savior. And that's, that's guaranteed me to be a son of God. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Why? Because it was already predestined. It was already foreordained. It, it was already written. Come on, come on, come on, come on. According to his good pleasure and will, to the praise of the glory of his grace. Not to the praise of glory of no certain denomination, not to the praise of glory to some certain person, but it was to the praise of the glory of his grace. The only way that man is saved is through the grace of God. It is nobody that can lay no hands on you to save you. There's nobody that can chant something over your head and save you. There's nobody can tell you that you sit there in that chair and God going to save you. It was already done before the foundation of the world that the lamb was slain and that God said that uh, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe it upon him shall not perish. It was already done. Well, you know, somebody told me that I had to do this. I'm telling you now that you've got to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Believe that that blood that was slain for you washed away all sins. Oh, I'm going to show it to you in the book. I'm going to show it to you in the book. Here it is. Come on, come on. Well, Paul, tell me how, tell me how, uh, Apostle Paul, just tell me how, the, uh, how, tell me how was all this preordained? Tell me how was all this before the foundation of the world? Explain to me how uh, how have I been uh, uh, adopted into the family? T tell me how. Well, well, with he had made us acceptable in the beloved. Paul said, even you Jews that before that followed after the law, you were zealous of the law, and I told y'all that Christ had came to fulfill the law. You Gentiles that are sitting here right now, because I'm an apostle that's coming to the Gentiles, all of you sitting here, some of you Jews that are zealous, looking at the Gentiles and saying, now nah, they ain't part of the promise. But Paul said, I'm telling you right now that they have been preordained because it was something that happened up on that cost of cross of Calvary that made them one, that made them a child of the Most High God. It was something that was in the blood that cleared them up, and now guess what? The Gentile too can be a child of the Most High God. Well, what happened, Paul? Tell me what happened. He said, wherewith it had made us acceptable in the beloved. Why? In whom we have redemption through his blood. Hallelujah. The redemption is through the blood. The redemption is through the blood of Jesus Christ. We are made children of God. We are, uh, was, the adoption uh, uh, was come through Jesus, but it was through the blood of Jesus Christ that we are able to be sons of God. We are able to be daughters of God. We are able to be children of God. We are able to be heirs of the kingdom of God because of the redemption blood that Jesus shed upon Calvary. That's the gospel. That's the gospel. That's the good news. And, and what was it? It was it was to the praise of the glory of his grace. Well, what you mean his grace? It was the praise of the glory of his grace. It wasn't nothing that you did to deserve it. It's unmerited favor that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth upon him shall not perish. Whosoever. Whoso, whosoever. Why? Why? He said, why then had he made us accepted? He made us accepted. How did he make us accepted? Well, God has to see the blood of his son, Jesus. The way that we are accepted is that God looks down upon the believer and see him draped with the blood of his son, Jesus. He see that Christ is in our hearts. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It is that in whom we have redemption through his blood. What is that? Well, how were we redeemed from? Oh, we have redemption and the forgiveness of sin according to his riches. 
of his grace. Pay attention. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. You mean to tell me that somebody prayed for me and told me that, that when they prayed for me, my sins was washed away because they said a certain thing? No, because of the redemption blood that Christ shed up on the cross, that blood that Christ gave. I, 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 I've been, my, my sins have been forgiven. My sins have been forgiven. I don't have to keep going through no rituals talking about this, that, the other. My sins are forgiven. Why? Because Christ took away the sins of the world. His, his father gave him. He laid down his life that we may have life and have it more abundantly. He laid down his life that we may have everlasting life. When? It was done before the foundation of the world. And Paul said in the fullness of time he came and he walked this earth born of a woman. And he walked this earth even to take those that were under, I'm going to show you that in Galatians, even to take those that were under the law. He, he, he came uh, uh, under the law born of a woman that he redeemed even those that were under the law. He redeemed us. Paul said, there's not even Jew no more. There's not Greek no more. There's not male or female. Come on now. We're going we to see all that. We need to understand and know that as a born again believer, one that has accepted Christ as your Savior, have, oh man, you a child of the Most High God. And if God be for you, who can be against you? Why? Why? Why then? Are we so weak? Why then are we so weary? Why then are we so uh, taken away with any old doctrine? We need to stand upon the gospel word. The gospel message that Christ died for our sins. Christ was buried for our sins. Christ was resurrected and sitting on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, making intercessions for those who are believers in him. God the Father. Hey, Amen. Come on now. Come on. I, 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 I got to go. I got to go. I stayed there too long. I didn't want to stay there that long. Go back to Galatians. And we're going to go more. Not today. We're going to go more into this adoption. Because I really want us to understand the spirit of adoption. Because the spirit of adoption gives us the inheritance. Everything that was promised to Christ, by us in Christ, we have that same, uh, uh, the same promises. It is not that, oh, I'm a stepchild. No, no, I, I get the full benefits. I get the full benefits as a, 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 a like I, I'm, I'm born of God. Because I'm born of God once I've been reborn. I'm born of God. I get the full benefits. I'm a joint heir. All the, all the privileges belongs to me as well. Hey, man, we got to understand that the adoption in the Roman Empire was different than what we see adoptions here today. We're going to get into that, but it's going to take some, some, some real show you that and some Bible study. So come with me in Bible study one day, uh, the next couple of weeks. We're going to get into that adoption even more because I don't want you to think is that something that God went in and made up, uh, went in, uh, yeah, I'm going to adopt them now. This means we're full, we're full fledged. Children of God. Ain't no, he don't, that adoption, he don't even, that, that word adoption, that you thinking of, that you can watch that out your mind. We're full pledged members of the body of Christ. We're full pledged heirs of God. We're children of God. He's our father. The spirit in us cried, Abba, father. Abba, father. Abba, father. He's our father. Hallelujah. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Hallelujah. So let, let, let us look at Galatians. Let us look at Galatians. Listen to Paul in the book of Galatians. Around by the third chapter. After he got through telling them about the law. And telling them about the schoolmaster. He was telling them about the schoolmaster, which was kept us under the law. And then he went in to tell them right there in the, in, the, in the third chapter, around about the 21st, 25th verse, Paul began to show them the difference in the legalism of the law and the grace of God. Paul, you got to understand now, Paul 
zealous of the law. Now, Paul uh, was a teacher of the law, one that set up under the, the great teacher Gamaliel. He, he knew the law. Oh, yes, sir. Not only that, he kept it. He walked in it. Hallelujah. He said that he's touching every point of it. But then Paul said that everything that he had done before he counted it all as done after he was, might as well say, after he was known of Christ, or after he was in Christ, or after he found Christ, he considered everything as done, but he recognized that the law is good if it's used properly. Why? Because the law is what showed us how sinful we are. The law has shown you every point that sinful man is. Yeah, and the law is what brings you to the cross. Yeah, the law is what shows, man, you're a sinner, you ain't no good, you can't do good in your flesh, ain't nothing good about you. My well, come on to the cross of Christ. That's what the law did. That's what the law do. The law is good. And, and not only that, the law is is, 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 is is perfect. Yeah, the law is good. And it's spiritual. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. And then he said, but after that faith is come, the faith in Christ Jesus. After that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. The law. I'm, I'm going somewhere with this now because I want us to understand what I'm trying to tell us about it being a child of the Most High God. Because oftentimes we want to categorize people that are in Christ. We want to categorize them. I mean, we are so separated that on a dis particular group go to this church, but they're supposed to be in Christ. But this particular group don't do this, because, and, but they're supposed to be in Christ. Well, if you don't look a certain way, then you can't go to this church. And if you don't act a certain way, you can't go to this church. But Paul is telling them right now that we're not on a schoolmaster, but get, but get this. He said, for ye are the children of God. How? By faith in Christ Jesus. There I go again. See, this this is why so much separation in the body of Christ. Uh, this is why so much separation in so-called so organized churches is that oftentimes the faith ain't in Christ is in man. The faith ain't in Christ is in a denomination. The faith ain't in Christ is in prestige. The faith ain't in Christ is in whatever we can come up to keep certain people away from this place or to draw certain people to this place. See, the faith ain't even in Christ. But Paul told him that, but after the faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ. Well, what are you saying, Paul? What are you saying, Apostle Paul? What are you saying? Well, I'm telling you this. For as many of you that have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Many of you that have been baptized in Christ have put on Christ. The baptism of the Holy Spirit have put you in Christ. The water baptism has identified you to be a believer in Christ. But the baptism of the Holy Ghost has put you in Christ. The water baptism, when you went down, now I can be identified with you as a brother, as a child of God, because I can identify you because you got baptized once you got, oh, hallelujah, once you accepted Christ as your Savior, you went down in water. Now, guess what? That water baptism may, may, uh, lets you be recognized as a born-again believer. I'm a believer in what Christ did upon that cross. I believe it. I stand on it. That's my faith. My faith is in Christ. But the baptism of the Holy Ghost, Ghost allowed you to be regenerated. It allowed you to have a renewed mind. It allowed you to be a, 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 a place in Christ. Because guess what? For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Man, we, this is, he said earlier, he said, for ye are the children of God by faith in Christ. How am I a child of God? By faith in Christ. I'm a child of God by faith in Christ, not because of faith in Chester, not because of faith in, in something else. I'm a child of God because my faith is in Christ. The hope of glory. The King of kings, the Lord of lords. Come on, come on. I, I, I really need us to get this because we really need to understand that we can't be tossed to and fro with all these other doctrines that 
some other kind of way that you can get to the Father, but they say the only way to the Father is through the Son. Uh, he said he is the way, the truth, and the life. So I got to understand that if I'm in Christ, I have security because what? I'm standing in Christ. That's not no, no longer me standing, it's Christ standing. I got to believe that. I got to stand on that. Here it is. He said, for as many of you have, have been, come on, have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. This is the, this is, this is the difference. This is the difference. The Paul is telling them now, uh, uh, you guys, you, you're standing here and you saying that, that these, uh, Gentiles over here, they ain't my brother. These Gentiles over here, these Greeks, I'm a Jew. They ain't no, no. They ain't no kin to me. What you trying to tell me that they my brother? Uh, that group of people over there, they, they my sisters. Now, this is what Paul is telling them now. That when you were baptized in Christ and you put on Christ, Paul said that there is neither Jew there nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye all are one in Christ. This is the problem that we have today. It's too much separation, but it's only if you can only be one in Christ. If you said you've been born again, if you said that you're, oh, hallelujah, been regenerated, then you got to recognize that I don't see no color as a born again believer because there's only one way and it's God's way. There's only one Savior and it's Jesus Christ. And I, oh, hallelujah, Paul said that there's no more. No Jew, there's no more Greek, there's no more free, there's no more bond, there's no more male, there's no more female. He said as one in Christ. Children of God, we got to be one in Christ. One in Christ. Well, why so much separation? Oftentimes there's so much separation because people haven't truly been born again. You might well go and say amen. If you look at somebody in a different color, they're supposed to be a brother in Christ, and you tell my, and I'll hear no brother mine because he's the same color, man. You ain't been born again. You might well go and say amen. If you ain't got to say amen, I'm going to tell you uh, amen anyway. There's no separation in the word of God. If you're a child of God, you love like a child of God. There's no separation. And if you're falling, following foolishness, uh, uh, laboring yourself as some kind of uh, other than a child of God, then you need to repent from that and say, I'm a child of God. I'm a born again believer. I don't believe in no separation. I believe in unity. I believe in one. That's the child of God. Well, why why you say that? Because uh, Paul, the apostle Paul called of God to be an apostle. And he said, if ye be in Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. That's according to the promise. So, born again believer, you are heirs uh, according to the promise. God made the promise even before the law was all, before the law came in Moses, he had already made the promise to Abraham. Yeah, Abraham is of the promise. Yeah. And we are uh, seeds uh, 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 of that same seed. And here it is. He said, and ye be in Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed. And guess what? And heirs according to the promise. <coughs> Pay attention. Pay attention. Now I say that the heir is, is as long as he is a child, different nothing from the servant, though he be the Lord of all. But it's under tutor and governor until the time appointed of the father. Pay attention. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. We were under the law. We were kept under the law. We were kept under the law. But Paul said that something happened. Paul said that something happened. Paul said even us, we were held on the elements of the world, the law. And guess what? But Paul said something happened. I'm showing you the gospel again. Paul said something happened. Then he said in verse 4, he said, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth who? His son. How was he made? He was made of a woman, made under the law. Here it is. To redeem them that were under the law. 
that we might receive the adoption. Now that word again, the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons of God, had sent forth the spirit of his son unto our hearts crying, Abba, Father, Abba, Father. He sent forth the spirit of Jesus Christ within the believer to cry, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. Abba, Father. Paul said that God sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart crying, Abba, Father. Come on, believers, we got to get this. We got to get this. We need to know who we are. We need to know whose we are. And we need to know how did it become. We need to understand that God has already preordained. He had already predestinated. He had already, the plan was there. Well, and the plan has already been complete. Now we wait for him to come back to receive his own. Yeah, Christ is married to the church. Yeah, he's married to the church. I, I don't like to see the, the church of Christ. He's married to the church. Yeah, he's married to the church. Come on, come on, come on. I, I, I didn't mean to stay there that long. I, I want us to really understand that as the body of Christ and as the, the children of God, as the sons and the children of God, there's no separation. We are all of us that are under under him, those that have accepted him and have been born again, we can't look and say, well, that, uh-uh, and that, uh-uh, uh-uh, no. He said, one in Christ. One in Christ. And if anybody teaching it different, find out where they're teaching it from, and you need to understand that that ain't of God. One in Christ. God is not a respecter of person. He's not a respecter of person. He don't love one person because they're a different color or got more money or, or dress better or go to a bigger church or nothing. He don't care about that. Like, that's foolishness. God is no respect to a person. God is interested in that circumcised heart. And that circumcised heart will only see one. The circumcised heart is love. The circumcised heart has been regenerated. The circumcised heart has been born again. And all things that he want to do is to please God. The only thing a regenerate person want to do is please God. He want to be pleasing to God. But he recognized in his flesh that he can't be. So guess what? He said, Abba, Father. He recognized that it's the inner man that is strengthened through the power of the Holy Ghost that only come from God. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, the regenerate man is not trying to please man. The regenerate man don't separate itself from the word of God. The regenerate man don't get involved in all this foolishness of the world. Why? John said, be not in the world. Love not the world, nor the things that are in it. Love not the world. Well, what is that? The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. That's what John said. Yeah, he, he was giving that through the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, come on, come on. I got to show us something. I, I, I got to go somewhere. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go to, let's go to, uh, I want to show you the same thing right here. I want to show you the same thing in Romans. I've showed it to you. I showed it to you in Ephesians. The adopted children. The sons of God. I showed it to you in Galatians. So he said it to the church in Galatia, and he said it to the churches of Ephesus, and go back to Romans, the church in Rome, the letter wrote to Rome, the epistle wrote to Rome. Go to chapter 8. Go to chapter 8. Let me show it to you again. Oftentimes, we find ourselves being tossed to and fro because we don't sit up under the word uh, enough. And we don't really endure or, or, or take in the word in our spirit, man, and allow it to feed us and, and, and penetrate our spirit to understand what the word is saying because we won't sit up under the word long enough 
And we truly won't study the word long enough. And this is where all that division comes from. This is where all the separation comes from. And all that separation and division is of the devil. And then when, and then the, the Bible said that you are your of your uh, father, the devil, with the separation. And he was talking to church folk then. He was talking to sad Sadducees and Pharisees when he told them, y'all are y'all father of the devil. That's why y'all can't even see that I'm the son of God. That's why y'all can't even believe what I'm saying. I'm telling you scripture. Y'all can't believe it because y'all y'all children of your father. So because the devil got children too. And he told them that y'all are children of your father, which is the devil. That is the separation. That is all the separation that you see in the world today. That is the that is a lot of that what you see uh, uh, the separations in in bodies was supposed to be bodies of Christ because most time the children of the devil they come in they come in uh, 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 falsehood. So no separation in Christ. It's one in Christ. One faith, one Lord, and one baptism. It's one in Christ. We're not separated. It should not be separated. This is why we have to know that those that are children of God need to recognize that if you're a child of God, there's no separation. There's no separation. If you're a child of the Most High God, you need to understand that you're led of the Spirit. And that it's one faith, one Lord, and one baptism. We all ought to be saying the same thing. We ought to be saying the same thing. We ought to be lifting up the cross of Christ to draw others unto Christ. Not until no certain gets that the other, but draw all. Christ said, if I be lifted up, I draw all men unto me. My God, my God. Here it is, here it is. Romans 8, around about the 14th verse, talking about these sons of God, these children of God, these heirs. Come on, we really need to get this to the believer. And, and not only to the believer, but I want this to be seen to the non-believer. So when they accept Christ as their Savior, they will recognize that they've been sealed with the Holy Ghost of promise. And that they are, guess what, eternally secure. That means they have life everlasting and the devil in hell can't pluck him out. Why? He don't have the power to pull you out. What should separate us from the love of God? Nothing. That's Nothing. There's nothing that you can pluck you out of the hands of God. Once you accepted him as Savior, there's nothing can pluck you out of the hands of God. See, the devil is as a roaring lion. He's not the lion. Jesus Christ is the lion of Judah. The devil is not. He has a roaring lion. And sometimes he roar and it makes you fearful, but you got to roar right back. Get you behind me, Satan. Come on, we need to understand that. For we have that type of authority through the word of God. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. For as many are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. As many that are led, come on now, by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. As many that are led by God, they are the sons of God. How did I become a son? I just told you I, I, I accepted Christ as my Savior. I accepted him. I believe that he died for my sin. I believe I've been redeemed. I believe I've been reconciled back under God. I believe that he, he took away my sins. I believe he had made me white as snow. I believe that, that, that his blood is precious. I believe that it, oh man, that it, it has washed me. I've been regenerated. I've been regenerated. I've been born again. Hallelujah. The born again believer know they've been born again. And the spirit that they were born of, it was the spirit of God. Oh, hallelujah. And that way you got to be led of God. The same spirit that led you of God is the one that are able to make you a son of God. It said, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But ye have received the spirit of adoption. That a word adoption again. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The believer is able to cry, Abba, Father. And if you haven't accepted Christ as your Savior, then guess what? You're still under your first father, Adam, who was born in the sin and shaped in iniquity. Adam was kicked out of the garden. Why? Because of sin. And until you accept Christ 
as your savior, then you're still under Adam. And Adam is, oh, hallelujah. You got to come and accept Christ as your savior. Yeah, the new birth. The new birth. The new birth. This is, the, for as many are led by the spirit of God. So I might as well go and say it. I might as well go and say it. Before I got born again, I wasn't being led by the Spirit of God. I was being led by my flesh. And I was led of the devil before I got born again. Might as well go and admit it. Yeah, might as well be transparent. Yeah, yeah. Now, as many are as led by the Spirit of God, they're what? The sons of God. And then Paul said over earlier that ain't no Jew, ain't no Greek, ain't no male, ain't no female, ain't no free, ain't no bond. He said it's all one in Christ. Well, why so much division this day? Spirit of the devil. You let a God, it's no division. One. Anybody that will accept Christ right now to say you are my brother in Christ. Regardless, you're my brother in Christ. I don't care if you're Mexican, Ethiopian, Chinese, Japanese, whatever. If you accept Christ and you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection, you are my brother in Christ. Because it's one in Christ. If you speak Spanish, then speak Spanish. But if you said that you accepted Christ as your Savior, then you my brother. Because we're children of God. We're sons of God. There's no separation. Here it is. He didn't say we hadn't received the spirit of bondage no more. Get why? Because we received the spirit of adoption. Well, where we cry our father. And it said the spirit, help it, bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Why? The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Believers, stand on that you're a child of the Most High God. Stand on what Christ did upon the cross has given you the, 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 that adoption of the Spirit, that, that you're a child of the Most High God. And not only that, it said it like this, that if children, then heirs and heirs of God, and guess what? Join as with Christ. If so, that we suffer with him. Yeah, we suffer with him, but guess what else we do? We suffer with him that be, that, that get what he said, that we may be also glorified together. We suffer with him that we'll be glorified together with him. Come on now. We as the body of believers need to understand that we are children of the Most High God. We are sons of God. And the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwelling in us. And we got to understand is that no separation. We have been brought out of darkness unto the marvelous light. We have been quickened. We have been made alive. Well, in Christ Jesus. Come on. I need you to go somewhere. I need us to go somewhere. Here it is. Romans 8. You ain't got to go there. Just listen. Romans 8. Romans 8 and 28 says it like this. And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God. To them who are according, who are called according to his purpose. Write that down. Romans 8 and 28. Romans 8 and 28. And we know all things work to the good of those who love him. Here it is. Pay attention. Romans 8 and 31 says it like this. What should we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? If God be for us, who can be against us? If God be for us, who can be against us? Well, he said that we're children of God. We are, we are adopted, the, uh, we have the adoption of the Spirit. He said we're sons of God. So if God is my Father, then who can be against me? If God is your Father, who can be against you? 
Come on now, we we really need to get the do you truly believe and understand that, that if when you accepted Christ as your Savior, oh man, you became a child of God, that not only that, you joint heirs of Christ, that you have power through the power of the Holy Ghost that enables you to say, if God be for me, who can be against me? I'm a father. He said he give you the spirit of Christ that cried, I'm a father. I'm a father. If God be for me, who can be against me? If God be for you, who can be against you? Romans 8 and 37 say it like this. Nay, in all things, we are more than conquerors. Ha! Through him that loved us. We are more than conquerors. Romans 8 and 37 said nay. And he was talking about all the things, the elements of the world. It was like none of that can, 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 can keep us away from the love of God. And then he said nay, nothing. Why? Because we're more than conquerors. Guess how? Through him that loved us. We're more than conquerors through him that loved us. We can't take him out. We can't take Jesus out. We can't take him out. We cannot take him out. He's got to be uh, uh, in. And it, the, uh, the only way to the Father is through the Son. Why? He's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All one. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. One. They're one. Jesus is God. Holy Spirit. God. God is God. It's all. He won. One. One. One spirit. One faith. One baptism. One law. One faith. One baptism. One. 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 No separation. We all are one. Children of God. We all are one in Christ. Come on. I got one more to hit and I'm going to get out of here. I got one more to hit and I'm going to get out of here. Go to John. First John 4 and 4. First John 4 and 4. Just wanting us to understand that when we became, when we were born again, and we accepted Christ as our Savior, and we came before him, and God put in us a, a new heart, and, and now we're able to recognize that we, we've been regenerated. We are, we, are, we are born again. Jesus told Nicodemus that you must be born again. Born of the water and born of the Spirit. He recognized that. He had to be born again. And he told the woman at the well that those who worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. And the only way that we can worship in spirit and truth is that we have the spirit of the most high God dwelling in us. The power of the Holy Ghost. And the only way you get the power of the Holy Ghost dwelling in you as you be born again. As you accept Christ as your sinner. And accept him as your savior. And come before the cross of Christ and be born again. That's the, that's the gospel. The good news is that, that, that God gave us only the God's son. That, that, guess what? That the only way that we can go to heaven is that you got to be perfect. And guess what? There's no man that has walked this earth that was perfect but Jesus Christ. Because the Bible said that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And John said that if you say you don't have sin, then you'll lie. And the truth ain't in you. So, in other words, the only way that the perfection it was through Jesus Christ. And God had a plan before the foundation of the world that he would send his only begotten son, that whosoever would come and believe upon him shall not perish. That is the plan. That's the gospel message. Oh, yeah. And then you become the son of God. You become the daughter of God. You become the children of God, believing upon what Christ did upon the Calvary. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. That's only one way. That's only one way to the Father, and that's through the Son. No man can come through any other way if he do either a thief and a robber. No other way that you can come to the Father but unto Jesus Christ. And if you come any other way, you're a thief and a robber. Hallelujah. So we understand that. We understand that. Go to 1 John. See what 1 John had to say. Come on. I want, I want to go to 1 John around about the fourth chapter. This was my opening uh, statement of opening prayer this morning, opening scripture this morning when we opened up. Here it is. And, and I, I'm going to be quick about this. Here it is. John, 1 John. 1 John 4 and 4. Believers, get it. Come on. Believers, you are of God. Little 
little children. Believers, you are of God, little children. Believers, you are of God, little children. And have overcome him. Who? The devil. The world. The enemy. Why? How? Why? How, why? How can you say that, John? How can you say that, John? When I feel like I'm, 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 I'm frustrated. When I feel like I'm going through so much. When I feel like the elements of the world is overtaking me. How can you say that, John? Well, the evidence is this. He, John, said that ye are the are of the of God, little children. And we need to hear this. And I'm glad we're closing out right here. We need to hear this, little children. Those that have accepted Christ as your Savior, you need to understand and know the word is true. And you need to hear this to give you strength and the power of the Holy Ghost. You are of God, little children. Come on. Then John goes on and said like this, and have overcome them. You have overcome the world, have overcome death, have overcome fear, have overcome all the elements of the world. Why? How? How? Because? You see that? I want you to go back and read it. If you didn't pull the script up, I want you to go back and read it. Because you really need to know the effect of it. You really need to feel the effect of what John was telling the little children. And, I, and I'm pretty sure that they were uh, wavering and they were going through some things and they were feeling like, oh man, we've been persecuted. And they were feeling like that, oh man, I, I thought I was saved. Oh man, I, I thought that the power of God would just keep me from all the elements of the world. But we got to understand that we live in a fallen world and the things that you see in the world is in the world. But you in the spirit, you are, come on now, you are of God. Little children, and have overcome them. Come on, come on. Why? Because. You might want well to say because. because. Because greater is he that is in you. <laughs> greater is he that is in you. Sons of God. Children of God. Believers. Are born again believers. Greater he that is in you. Come on now, then he that is in the world. Oftentimes we find ourselves falling by the wayside because we forget that greater he that is in us than he that is in the world. The enemy is able to overcome you because you're trying to do it in your flesh. But if you will go to our Father who is in heaven, uh, how, how would be thy name, thy kingdom come, thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If we will go to our father, because he said we're children of God, we're sons of God. But if we will go to him uh, as little children and trust him, greater he that is in us than he that is in the world. And if you understand it's the spirit of God, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is able to give you all the power through the power. Power the Holy Ghost. We are victorious through what Christ did upon Calvary. Um, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. John said that greater he that is in you, children of God, than he that is in the world. Born again believers. We got to stand firm on greater he that is in us than he that is in the world. We got to stand firm on that we're children of the Most High God. And there's nothing in this world that can separate us from the love of God. The elements of this world do not control us. We are kingdom. We are kingdom. We are part of his heavenly plan. Because he said that, that if I go, I go away and prepare a place for you. That way you should be with me. One, You'll be with me. And my father's house is many rooms. Come on, it's many mansions. You'll be with me. And not only that, in Ephesians 2, it said that, oh man, that we'll sit with him in heavenly places. We sit with him in heavenly places. Children of God, stand up on the word of God. Now there may be somebody today that haven't accepted Christ as your Savior. There may be somebody today that don't truly understand that is the only way that you can be saved is that you come and accept Christ as your Savior. Now, yeah, 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 understand that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. 
We all were born in the sin and shaped in iniquity. But God had a plan before the foundation of the world to take us back out of the grips of the enemy. See, go, he, see Christ uh, is victorious over the devil. And see, the devil will make you think, that, oh man, you can go on, if you accept Christ, you ain't going, now don't worry about that. You got to accept Christ as your savior. You got to come before him just like you are right now and accept him as your savior. Hey man, I'm going to wait till I get it right. You can't get it right. He's already made it right. Man, I'm going to wait till I get, uh, get myself together, then I'm going to go to church. And I don't care if you go to church, whenever you go to church, he wants you now. He wants you just like you are right now. Why? Because he, he created you. He created you. He know you. He knew you before you were even born. Before your mom and daddy laid together, he already knew who you was. He know where you at right now. But guess what? As long as you got breath in your body, you're able to come unto him right now. Come to the cross of Christ right now. It's nothing that you've done so bad in your life that he will not accept you right now as a son, as a child of God. You can't do too bad that you can't come before him right now and lay down before the cross and accept him right now as your savior. And he's just to forgive. Why? Because he loved you. He loved you. And he wants you to come to him. He's given us time to come to him. Oh, you, we got oh, so much going on in the world. Yes, it is. But he, he want to save you. He want to give you everlasting life. He want to give you life everlasting. Uh, that blood that was shed up on Calvary, he did because he loved us. So there be one today that want to accept Christ as your savior. Come to him right now. Father God, we come before you right now. Lord God, with thanksgiving in our hearts. Thank you for this opportunity once again to labor in the vineyard, Lord God. We thank you for allowing us to labor, Lord God, in your vineyard, Lord God. We thank you for the labor, Lord God. We thank you for the laborers that are laboring with us, oh God. Father God, we thank you for our soul today that might be saved, Father. For you say the angels in heaven rejoice if one. So Lord, we pray that right now, Lord God, that one will receive you right now. As